build platform, which is the light gray rectangular area to the left of where the powder is being fed. The powder is being spread now simply to help the roller mechanism uh, which will be moving across to produce a very flat layer of powder on which the which will be the basis for the part to be built. Here's the laser the roller mechanism is moving across, the excess powder falls into a bin and we which is heated. Burrell continues. The laser scans the surface. We see a T shaped area here in the center, which is where the laser has scanned now. The powder melts together and also into the previous layer. And you can see the depression, then the roller mechanism moves across again to provide more powder. The process is repeated, the laser scans. This is repeated uh, thousands of times typically to produce uh, a part. The area that's being scanned, of course, varies from layer to layer. At the end of this, the uh, parts are removed from the fabricator. Uh, we do this by pushing the part bin cylinder or piston upwards. And so now in this, in this volume, we have a lot of white powder that remains loose, but also the areas that were scanned by the laser produce the parts in exactly the same configuration that they were produced on or represented on the computer screen. Uh, the parts then are moved to a breakout table where we remove the powder, which is loose and recyclable. These parts were, are a variety of test parts. We have a couple of test cylinders that are being removed at this point uh, with some, some test samples, but also a large uh, bit of elbow piping, which is used for our Society of Automotive Engineers here on campus at the University of Texas. Uh, the, the last step is to clean the parts, so this is done with brushes and with metal implements, not dissimilar to uh, dental uh, hardware. Uh, the, and the main advantage of this is seeing that by producing parts by a computer image and then following with this printing process,